is Etsy print on demand actually a passive income business model? First, we need to define what does passive income even mean? Why don't we just ask the most reliable source there is? Chat G B T. Chat G B T. I always say it wrong. According to Chat GPT, unlike active income, which is earned through direct participation in a job or business, passive income is typically earned on an ongoing basis with little to no effort once the initial setup is done. I've been in the entrepreneurial space for seven years now, since I was like 21. Dang, I'm getting old. Okay. And this term passive income gets thrown around pretty loosely, or at least nowadays it does for sure. Everybody wants passive income. And a lot of people are flocking to Etsy right now under this assumption that that's what the Etsy print on demand business model is. Now I'm not technically saying it's not, we just want to clearly define what does that actually look like to get a business that is truly passive. I have a fundamental belief that the biggest reason Etsy sellers fail is because there's this mismatch of expectation versus the reality of what it takes, especially if someone's learning curve or design skills isn't really at par of with the competitors that are entering the space, right? This is probably also why a lot of my videos underperform is because I don't like to sell the dream of what it takes to build a business, whether it's on Etsy, whether you want to start an Airbnb business, whether you want to flip land, whatever Whatever it is, whatever your thing is, right? It takes a lot of work to build a business, no matter what. And if you're shooting for passive income, it's gonna take a lot of work because a lot of people want passive income, right? As an entrepreneur, if 99 things can go wrong in your startup, let's just assume that 99 things might go wrong, but that's not going to inhibit you or keep you from continuing to learn and grow. They might happen and we have to be okay with it and we have to push through to get to the other side. Like we read on ChatGPT, a passive income business requires super minimal effort, but a consistent inflow of income. And so while it's true, you can run an Etsy print on demand business from anywhere. You can make sales when you're sleeping or while you're on vacation, while you're living your best life, just not working a nine to five, we first have to define what does the business engine look like for an Etsy print on demand model. And then we can decide and highlight what are the actual steps we then need to do for the business to make it truly passive. So here are all the components that make up the day to day of an Etsy print on demand organization. Number one is customer service. Someone's got to answer your customer service. You're going to get messages. People are going to ask questions. People are going to complain, but that's okay. That's just part of the business. And honestly, my rule of thumb with my customer service, if I send out a hundred orders and maybe we piss off three to five, that's a pretty good ratio. You can't make everyone happy, but obviously you are striving to make that percentage as happy as possible. It cuts a little deeper in the beginning because it's all your blood, sweat and tears and you kind of take it personally, but honestly you have to look at the long play and just not take it personal and just deal with it the best you can. The second part of a print on demand business engine is research and development. So we now know that it's important that the research of the product opportunity, the keyword opportunities and development of the actual product. So designing the product on the correct trendy mockups with the trendy sayings and the, all the things that go into optimizing an Etsy listing, that research and development process never stops. There's a constant consistent inflow of new product launches happening. If you're not doing customer service or you're not working on the other things to run a POD store, you're probably designing products because that never ends. Number three is Etsy PPC. So Etsy pay-per-click working on tweaking the dials on getting your Etsy ads maxed out to the max budget allowance, which for most shops or all shops is a thousand dollars a day. So learning how to run your business with a marketing budget to make sure that you're turning a profit after marketing costs. This is going to become even more vital as we enter 2024 because those shops are going to have an extra barrier or an extra moat of protection around themselves against all this new rising of competition. And the key thing here is with your budget maxed out to a thousand, 
but with profitability. And if you guys don't know how to run Etsy PC or you don't know how to run Etsy ads, I can cue a video above and I can link all of my Etsy ads videos below. I'm not saying go max out your ad budget and waste a bunch of money when you don't even understand the psychology or how to tweak the dials or know what you're looking for when it comes to your Etsy ads. Don't worry, I have tons of training, so make sure you go check those out next. Number four is personalization fulfillment. So now we know that another key component of a really top tier, high level print on demand shop is a shop that offers personalization. If you haven't already heard of a tool called Hello Custom, this helps you automate that process. So before, basically, if you wanted to offer personalization on a listing like this, you would have to basically manually go into Canva or Photoshop and put in the personalization request and then go manually fulfill it on the back end. Now we can actually automate this with Hello Custom. And when you get a personalization request, it will already input the personalization. And then it's just a matter of approving or denying that personalization request or editing it inside Hello Custom. So it's automatically getting pushed to Printify for you. And this is not only true for POD, having personalization in any type of business model on Etsy is 100% gonna help you stand out when it comes to standing out against the masses. Number five is a post-purchase follow-up. So this is a pretty easy SOP standard operating procedure that basically continues that conversation after you get a sale. So after you get a sale on Etsy, you don't wanna be like, bye customer never talks to you ever again, right? You wanna keep that conversation going as long as possible and nourish that relationship and build brand loyalty. I have a full training on my full follow-up strategy. Yes, it even applies for Etsy print on demand sellers. So you can cue that video next or you can get the link for that training in my description. And number six, finally, is social media. So social media is really not the most pressing thing when you first launch an Etsy shop or Etsy print on demand shop. But needless to say, you do wanna show that you exist on social media. TikTok, Instagram really are the two biggest one at this moment. But eventually when you do have some time, it is in your best interest to start opening those accounts. It's not that you have to start posting and making viral videos because the reality is you could spend all day just in content creation and making potentially viral videos. But again, your best time spent and your best dollar spent is inside Etsy. So making new listings, doing more research and development and Etsy ads, right? Your best dollar spent, best energy spent is really honing in on the traffic that is already existing inside the Etsy platform, right? Again, Etsy PPC is a huge major player in that. So now if we wanted to make this truly passive, because as you saw in that list, you could spend all day just in content or all day just in product designs, you could spend a lot of your time in customer service, right? There's still a lot of day-to-day -day things that you're doing. So it's not truly passive, but let's say that we want to turn this into a passive income business. According to ChatGBT, we're gonna have ChatGBT backing me on this, and also my opinion, what does that actually look like in the day-to-day? Well, that for me, a true passive income business is where less than 10% of your daily energy or daily standard work day is being dedicated to that thing that makes you money. So that means that you have built a business, you've built an organization that's not only running by itself operationally, but it's also growing by itself. So what key components do you need to then add to that business model to make sure that that happens? One is systems. You need to have systems for your customer service. Every inquiry needs to be laid out in a standardized process of how you deal with that. So then you can hire a customer service agent to then deal with the customer service for you. Number two is also systemizing your research and design process. So if you work with certain Etsy research tools or keyword research tools like Sales Samurai and you work with design tools like Photoshop or Canva or Creative Fabrica that work in combination of the research of the product opportunity and then the design work, right? You need to systemize that out to then be able to hand that off to an employee as well. So systems are really, really key to building an organization, like I said, that's not only running by itself, but also growing by itself. So customer service is offloaded. Research and development is offloaded. Same goes for the personalization fulfillment, your post-purchase follow-up, and even potentially social media. And when you have all of those parts of your business engine streamlined to a point where you can basically remove yourself because you have appointed employees for those positions, 
Only then you can watch a business not only run by itself, but also grow by itself. And the grow part of the business really comes from Etsy PPC and research and development of new product opportunities. And that is probably gonna be the most difficult position to hire for, unless you just have somebody that has that strategic mindset and that creative mindset in your back pocket. Now, this isn't to scare you or to make it seem like it's impossible because it's definitely not impossible. And if you're just starting for the first time, this is not even on your radar of things to worry about. But it's good to know that this is possible and that if your goal is to have true passive income, right? These are the things that we're gonna need to strive for in our businesses. And I have to admit, one of the biggest downfalls of my entrepreneurial journey is I got my business to a point where it was running by itself, but it wasn't growing by itself. It still needed me for photo shoots, it still needed me for research and development and listing optimization in Etsy PPC. So all the things that grow an Etsy business model. And so what I did is I was making a really good amount of money at that time and I thought I just had this green thumb that everything I touched was gonna turn to gold. So what did I do? I went out and tried to open three other businesses at the same time, neglecting the first business that was really feeding me. And as you saw, we did 1.1 million my first year. The second year, we still came out a little bit less than a million, but our margins halved because basically I was neglecting my business in the day-to-day -day and all the things that really needed to be happening um, when it came to that business. Not to mention I was over hiring. I was hiring unqualified people, overpaying for employees. I just made a whole bunch of mistakes, but hopefully we can learn from that in this channel, right? But the moral of the story is if you're working on building a passive income stream, we now know that it needs to run itself and grow itself and you're gonna need help in order for that to happen. And we also know that we're going to keep a blind eye to any other business opportunity until we really are only dedicating less than 10% of our standard workday to the organism that is growing and operating without you. And from that lesson, I now do not get involved in any other business venture unless it clearly contributes and aligns with my 10 year goal. And I've shared this journey pretty publicly over the last five years. So if you wanna know more about all my ups and downs with Etsy, Shopify, e-commerce in general, it all exists in my channel. So no curtains holding anything back, just go check it out. In summary, the answer to this video is Etsy actually a passive income business. It can be. 100%. But hopefully now that you've watched this video, you understand what that really truly looks like and really some action steps of how to get there. But if you're just starting out, we're not worrying about employees. We're just learning about how to perfect our own systems and becoming the master of one thing and then mastering it so perfectly to a T that we can build operation and systems around what we do in the day to day so that one day we can remove ourselves so we can focus on either not be so involved in the day to day and double down on growing the business or start new ventures. Guys, I hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. I have trainings, thousands of hours of videos on this channel. So if you want to learn about hiring and firing employees, Etsy ads, listing optimization, SEO, all of that can be found inside my channel. Thank you so much for staying to the end and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye guys.